All right, everybody. Glad to see everybody in here having a good time. I just promoted this on uh, my Telegram, so we should start to fill up here in just a moment. Um, let's give it a couple minutes. Maybe I'll find a song to play or something like that, and then we shall be right with you. And howdy, Lance. Hey, Lewis. <laughs> I love the photo, man. It looks great. It's cool. All right. Um, let me throw it, see if I can find a quick song. Lewis, how has your day been? Uh, it's been super busy. Trying to cram this in was a rough one, but hey, it's good. We're here. Yeah, thank you. This is going to be incredible, and I've got some awesome stuff to bring as well. Cool. All right, guys, while you're piling in there, we're going to throw a song on real quick, and we'll be here in two minutes and 28 seconds to be exact. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Jim Croce with Time in a Bottle, 1973, from your greatest hits. All right. So today... Lewis, Lewis, I got to stop you. you. You should be a commentator on the radio, man. You have the voice. <laughs> you're, you're already doing it. It's, hey there. Hi there. Oh there. Um, beyond, beyond radio, it's now video. Yeah, it is video. Right. Just having fun here, y'all. Um, <clears throat> so we've got Lance here with us. Uh, I'm going to start with something and we're going to dig right into it. And this is going to make sense. There is a fifth dimension beyond that which is known to man. It is a dimension as vast as space and 
and as timeless as infinity. It is the middle ground between light and shadow, between science and superstition, and it lies between the pit of man's fears and the summit of his knowledge. This is the dimension of imagination. It is an area which we call the twilight zone. And the twilight zone is certainly where we're at if we're going to talk about the Mandela effect. How are you doing, my brother? Great, Lewis. Great. How about you? I'm real good. So, uh, folks, we're going to keep this to about 45 minutes. Um, we're not going to talk about any products. Um, if you have any product questions, this wouldn't be the time for it. Um, if you'd like to support, though, you can still go to screwbiggov.com slash shop. There's a donation link. There's a link for Lance's products, which is a scent nutrition and EMF harmonize. And if you haven't known Lance, he is amazing. And he absolutely has the best products I think out there. Um, plus Thanks, I still got a bunch of t-shirts left. Boom. Here we go. Screw big guy. Okay. <laughs> enough with that. So <clears throat> the Mandela effect. So what I like to do, Lance, is I'm going to start off with just a little bit of info. So people kind of get, I guess a background of, of how this happened or, 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 or what we're going and you can, so to give you an idea, let me do this. I'm going to show something really quick and I'm going to read this directly from a website here. And it's going to add a lot of context to what we're doing. So I'm going to share this screen once more so people can get an idea. All right, cool. So what the Mandela effect, it refers to, this is called Very Well Mind. And you're going to notice a theme between websites if you go research this stuff, which I think is very, very interesting. Um, so it says the Mandela effect refers to a situation in which a large mass of people believes that an event occurred when it did not. Looking at the origin of the Mandela effect, some famous examples, as well as some potential ex explanations for the strange confluence of perception can help to shed light on the unique phenomenon. So the origins of the Mandela effect. The term Mandela effect was first coined in 2009 by Fiona Broom when she created a website to de detail her observance of the phenomena. So in essence, to cut to the chase, what happened is there was a ton of people that believe that Nelson Mandela died in prison in South Africa in the 90s, right? Um, however, he did not die in a prison in the 80s. He passed away in 2013. Um, so Broom was shocked about this, so she couldn't understand it. So she started to interview people, and she found a large mass of people that believed he died in the 80s. Now, maybe he did, maybe he didn't. And that's kind of what this, this, show, this show is about. And now things that we know now, maybe he was a clone. Maybe he did die. We don't, we don't know, but it's very, very interesting um, to go into that. So you'll notice several videos out there and out there are actually, how do I say that? They start off selling you on the idea of the, Mela, the, the Mandela effect is something special and amazing, right? But then slowly they transition into pretty much telling you that factually you are wrong. Your memory is wrong. You have a problem in your brain. You're easily swayed by a group and by group think, I think. And part of it is mass psychosis. So they, they start, they, they engage you in on these, a lot of these websites. And then they flip it over to everything they say is factual and you're going crazy. That's literally what they're trying to do. Now, have we seen this before? Ab absolutely. So you'll also notice that on most websites, they'll say it's, it's a false memory. So right in there, they always do this. The cabal positions things in certain words and phrases and throwing out to you. So they're already telling you at the, at the beginning of their, their rhetoric, it's a false memory, which means what you're seeing is or believing is not true. Now that may or not be, but that's the way they brainwash us with MK Ultra from the beginning. Where have we seen this before? Now it doesn't matter if guys, if you're a flat earther or a global per, or a person that believes in the globe. Here's a fact though. 
there's groups out there like the Flat Earth Society and other things that are positioned to draw you in. And then they are intentionally have groups out there that debunk those. So we've seen this before where they draw you in and then they show you how stupid you are. So just be aware of that if you're doing um, your own research. Um, so Lance and I have talked previously and we're gonna take a pragmatic approach to this phenomenon. Um, and I'm going to show one more thing and then Lance, you and I can go back and forth when I'm showing other stuff. And I know you have some things to cover guys. We're gonna try to keep this to 45 minutes. I do want this to be interactive. So put your posts in there. Um, but we may not get to any of your questions depending on our time frame. Let me share my screen again. And I'm going to show this one because this is near and dear to my heart. So when you're talking about the, the Mandela effect, I grew up, I was introduced to Queen, I think right when I was about ready to turn 10. And I this was the first album I got. And then I got, I, I purchased other albums. Yes, they were on vinyl back then. Nothing was, nothing was uh, on a phone or a chip. But what's interesting about this one is I know pretty much all the lyrics to all the Queen songs, especially from News of the World and Night at the Opera and their greatest hits. I've known them all by heart, right? At the end of the song, We Are the Champions, I've already, I've always known that Freddie Mercury ends the song with the words of the world. I've known it from the beginning. Now you can find some live, a couple lives, like two or three lives where he actually did that, but you cannot find any of the original albums that he says of the world on. But why does that matter? Because I never listened to any lives when I was a kid. I didn't have access to them. The only thing I had is this damn album right here. <laughs> and I know it was of the world. So just listen to this. See if I can get the volume up and hear it. Where can't, is it? Can't hear it, Lewis. Oh, you can't hear it? No. Whoa. What in the world? Hmm. That's weird. So you didn't hear anything, huh? Uh, very staticky. Let me try this again. See if this will work. Sometimes this happens. So let's see. Well, the good news, that's the only volume I'm going to play. So can you hear it? now yeah well so to my knowledge freddie mercury's always said of the world right at the end it certainly wasn't in it certainly was not in fact other people were saying yeah it definitely was of the world so it's not in anything that you can find except for a live here and there. So this guys is a perfect il illustration of the Mandela effect. Lance, you jump in anytime you want. Cause I'm just going to go through some, right? Yeah. And I, let you, we'll just have a, we'll have a banter back and forth. Absolutely. So I wasn't very familiar with this, but a lot of people mentioned this one. This is Bernstein bears. I guess People are saying it was Bernstein, but the, who, whatever, I don't know if we're in a timeline shift or whatever, but it says Bernstein Bears, and that's the official name. Let's, let's instead of saying timeline, because I don't want to jilt people's thought process, in 2022, <laughs> it said that Bernstein Bears is what it is. I'm not familiar with this. Um, I, I am Lewis. I remember it being Bernstein Bears. Bernstein with an E instead of an A. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Crazy. And you know what? There's a ton of people on here in chat saying the exact same thing. Yeah. It's just madness. So when, when people just say this is mass psychosis, it's, it's not. There's something else going on here.
Absolutely. Um, that video didn't play, but I remembered in Star Wars that Darth Vader said, Luke, I am your father. And it supposedly he does not say that. He says, no, I am your father. I don't know if you remember I, that or not. I remember Luke, I am your father. You do. Me too. Yes. yes. See, it, it's funny. So we're trying to take a pragmatic approach to this, but the reality is you either remember it or you don't. There's there's really not much there. We're going to try to figure this out. Now, I don't honestly remember this. This is C-3PO. I guess he wasn't all gold. He has one silver leg. Could be. I don't really remember that. Do you? I don't recall. Okay. I'm going to whip. Now, this one actually blew me away and i wasn't even a, a, i didn't even watch this show i know it was sex in the city <laughs> yeah 100 percent. i yeah. there's just no doubt in my mind i remember seeing the seeing the logo everything and now it says sex and the city yeah that is definitely in the city it was right okay <laughs> so so this is fun now you know what i mean it, but yeah. i remember all the commercials of this specifically Right. Okay. I also, I also didn't really watch it, but I remember the commercials and is, I mean, clearly sex in the city. All right. <laughs> this is crazy. Now, Forrest Gump, and I thought, I always said, life is like a box of chocolates. Absolutely. That, that's what I recall. Right. This is very, this can be debated, I think, on this one because it is very minute. They changed is to was. So he says life was like a box of chocolates. But that wouldn't even make sense if you think about it. Because I remember the movie. He, that would be past tense. And he was always talking as if it was present tense when he was referring to the conversation with his mom. Right. Um, and I don't know if we can hear it, but I'll just. My mom said it. Not really. Can't hear it. Yeah. So anyways, in, in here, in this clip, he says life was like a box of chocolate. And I remember it as life is like a box of chocolate. Now I'm not going to play this one, but guys say, it. don't, don't read this. I want you to just to say it in right now before you look at this. So Oscar Meyer, right? My baloney had a first name. It was O S C A R. My baloney had a last name. It was. You guys saying it out loud? Type it in there real quick. So my baloney had a first name. It was O S C A R. My baloney had a last name. It was. Wow, it's 50 50. This one's a trip. I remember it as M E Y E R. About 50% of people are saying. M A Y E R, and oh, now there's more people saying M A Y E R. So they're claiming it was M A Y E R. What did you know it as? Uh, e R or yes. E Y E R. E Y E R. But, but you know, I, I I don't recall specifically, to be honest. I mean, that's just kind of what's coming to mind. Yeah, and I think that's I think that's probably likely on this one too. And now it's a lot more. Yeah, it's could be about a 50-50. Um, I love you guys being interactive in here. Wow, about 30 of you responded on that one right away. Now, uh, do you guys remember with Monocle or without Monocle on Monopoly? How about you, Lance? With. 100%, right? Yeah. <laughs> I never knew him without a Monocle. In fact, we used to, as, as kids, we, you know, we would play around and we would, you know, we would talk about it and we would, we would go like that and, yeah. Not, not this, not the satanic sign that you know, right? Everybody is unequivocally is with. Well, guys, there supposedly you can't find anything on any box that that has him with the monocle. That one is freaking crazy. Yeah, that's nuts. Because uh, it was definitely with. <laughs> it is with. It's always yeah. been with, right? It's, I almost think this, the, okay, let's, let's take this down another rabbit hole. 
okay, so the theory is maybe the timelines kind of bumped together a little bit, and then we grab something from one timeline and they kind of mesh together. And that's why they're not, the, the changes are so subtle, right? So, but what if, just so, this is a what if, we know how the cabal likes to mess with us. Well, I was going to say, and then my theory would be wrong. I was, I was going to say, um, no, I was thinking of that. What if they just changed everything, but they can't change the physical boxes in your house, right? So it had to be a timeline shift. I mean, if, or mass psychosis. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> uh, JC Penny. Uh, I don't remember. I think, I don't remember how I recognize. I think it was without the last E for me. Oh, look, they're talking about the queen one here. Okay, now this one, Sally Field, I remember specifically back in the day watching the Oscars. Yes, I did. And it says, you like me, you really like me. I, I know she said it. It was, it was the talk of the town the day after, right? Because she was such a cutie, you know, smoking the bandit and all that stuff. And they're claiming she never said that, or they're saying right here, she didn't. Yeah, I even remember that. I mean, not when it happened, but uh, like all the, not jokes, but you know, like like puns that have been made off of that. Exactly, exactly. So I wish you could hear my, like, this better, because she doesn't. I'll just tell you what she says. She says, you like me right now, you like me. She never said that. I remember specifically that that was never, ever, ever. No, it was, it's crazy. And everybody agrees that you like me, you really like me. Um, okay, now this one was easy for me because I know I heard it. So you got some explaining to do, right? Ricky Ricardo and, and Lucille Ball. I believe they're claiming that he never, ever said that. It says, <laughs> he told Lucy, splain and start splaining. That's not true. I remember that line like <laughs> crazy. So this is where I do feel like, okay, there's either, either I need to admit myself to an institution and get checked out or there is some freaking timeline shift. Wrong? There's something going on. And and it's that. And it also could be, you know, uh, people intentionally changing information to, to mess with people. Yeah. Yeah. Except I bet you you guys can find some old monopoly yeah. in, in your house. And how did they, they can't come and change that. Right, right. You know, un unless there is some type of timeline flip. Or I mean, what I mean specifically is like, you know, this this website as an example, um, you know, they they could simply be making the statement. Oh, he never said that. Just oh, just of course, mess with people's minds. Just, just to mess with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. that's that's true. But I did check on a couple. That's why I went right to that Queen song, by the way, is because I looked at some what multiple websites were saying it about. The, the queen song and i'm like i'm not, that's crazy it's there i know it's there right and it's not there so the question is if there was a timeline shift when and i'm coming up to two different years and the 80s are really big for me for some reason um we'll skip that that's mona lisa mr rogers uh, this just is Kit Kat. Was Kit Kat like that, or does it had a dash? I thought it had a dash between Kit Kat, but I thought it did too. Okay, interview with the vampire. No, it was interview with a vampire. I believe. I don't even know what this is. Okay, it was a it was a very popular book way back in the day. This is something on Chick Fil A. It was very minor. Um, Don't need that one. Okay, curious, George. Tail or no tail? Um, I thought there was a tail. 
That makes two of us. No tail. Now, this one is huge, and there's got to be a way. I'm going to try to turn my microphone. You have to hear this one. This one blew my flipping mind. Turn it way up, guys, just so you can hear it. So I've always believed it was mirror, mirror on the wall. This is an actual clip from the movie. Wouldst thou know, my queen? Magic mirror on the wall. Who is the fairest one of all? Okay. So they say magic mirror on the wall. And supposedly within the whole movie, she never ever said mirror, mirror on the wall. I remember mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest of them all? Absolutely something they've got some explaining to do <laughs> <laughs> now this one was weird for me so th i there was a movie back in the day starring sinbad right and it was about a genie and i believe shaquille o'neal was in it right no that was later that was like uh, that was many 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 years later i believe there was a shaquille o'neal one i think i could be wrong um anyways it was called shazam right they said it never existed. It's not out there. You can't find it. I, I remember watching it. You did, right? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. Now, uh, my kids were Pokemon fans. I wasn't a huge fan. I don't know if Pikachu's tail is all yellow or not. I, I, know, you had, I know you had a Pikachu on your nightstand. No, I actually really did not like Pokemon. I had a bunch of friends who did, but I never got into it. Okay. Now, Fruit Loops. F-R-O-O-T or F-R-U-I-T? I remember O-O. -O. Okay. I don't remember, so I can't see. Now, this one I totally remember. When I was growing up, it was Jiffy. That's what I remember. Okay. Okay. I can't find Jiffy anywhere. It's non, non-existent. Uh, the manufacturer says, no, they even said, no, it's never been Jiffy. It's always been Jiff. Wow. I don't know, bro. It was, it was Jiffy and Skippy. Those were the two I remember. That's exactly what I remember too. Right. So that's crazy. All right. What out. I think that's pretty good. Oh, one more. Let's do this one. In my in my mind, I always said Smokey the Bear. And they're saying Smokey Bear. For some reason, I remember both. I do, uh, I do too. And I remember the switch too. Really? So I, I remember most clearly Smokey the Bear. Okay. So I remember Smokey the Bear also until the last couple of years when I've heard commercials, I've heard it as Smokey Bear. And I, I was like, did they change his name? So I, I, I literally cognitively recognized that there was a name change. But according to the creators, they're claiming it was never Smokey the Bear. It was always Smokey Bear. <laughs> wow. All right. I think that's. Oh, here's what, let's just do this one more. Come on. Field of Dreams was one of my favorite movies, right? I've been there. Oh, it's yeah, okay. Yeah, I, it's in Iowa and I have, um, I visited there once. Um, so, yeah. And, am I wrong? But what, it was always, if you build it, they will come, right? Absolutely. 100%. 100%. Nope. If you build it, he will come. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're going to end on that part. That is whack, right? Crazy. So guys, that gives you some context. Um, and I, I know big brain Lance is going to go a lot deeper than, than, than I did, but that no. gives you some context to what's going on out there. It is trip. Yeah. Amazing. Lewis, will you please allow me to share? Yeah.
I got it. Whoops. So we're going to talk about possible timeline jumping and also uh, quantum mechanics and uh, how it ties into the 2020 election. So people might find this very interesting. Wow, I like quantum mechanics. <laughs> so uh, back in 2020, um, I, along with uh, a, a group of people, uh, and I'll, I'll show some of their names down here, um, we organized this mass meditation slash prayer event for a fair and truthful and honest election in 2020. And, you know, we, we made it clear we weren't supporting uh, any one particular candidate or any, uh, any party uh, on the surface. You know, everyone, of course, uh, could support who they wanted, but we came together as a collective simply to vote that the truth and the righteousness of what the election is would come out and, and takes place. So um, this is an article that I put together and it just talks about some of this very interesting stuff. But the first quote that I want to read, this applies to all of us. You know, we're, we're aware of what happened in the election in 2020. Um, and I believe fully that we will see the truth come out and, you know, it's looking like sooner rather than later. Um, and I do believe that it was an operation in different regards to entrap darkness and make sure that light is brought out. So there's this incredible quote by Pierre Teilhard de Chardin. There's almost a sensual longing for the communion with others who have a large vision, the immense fulfillment of the friendship between those engaged in furthering the evolution of consciousness has a quality impossible to describe. So all of us who are part of this, you know, everyone watching right now and people who are following other patriots and other good humans who are trying to do what's right. We're, we're all part of this collective, this communion who's trying to move things forward. So during that time, uh, we, we brought out this idea and we wanted to implement it. And so I brought this to a friend of mine, Justin, and then he brought in another friend of ours, Kaylin, and we helped to organize this event. And it was, it was on the 1st of November and for just, a, it was about a three hour event, but the actual prayer and meditation was about 10 minutes. And, you know, we just made strong statements that, the truth would prevail and that the integrity of the vote would be upheld and maintained. Um, clearly that didn't happen in that moment, but this is where things uh, can, and I believe definitely will start to get very wild in our world. Uh, so several years ago, the, the first article Lewis that I actually wrote was called Peace Through Synchronized Global Meditation. And I talked about some of the physics and some of the science that even the military has studied extensively to understand the power of the mind. So, um, you know, you can see some of the names here who are involved in this, and I'm still really appreciative to all of these people. And it was a, a wonderful, wonderful event. But in, in relation to what we're talking about, Lewis, you know, do mass prayers and meditations actually work? Well, most people listening are going to say, yes, we know they do. But I want to lay out some of the uh, information that people will find fascinating. So in 1974, there was a study, the Maharishi effect, 7,000 people meditating and praying each morning and evening for three consecutive weeks. Uh, you can see the dates here back in the eighties. And, uh, according to the Rand corporation, which, you know, is like a military industrial complex, uh, corporation in and of itself. I mean, they even published and, and, um, spoke on this and said acts of global terrorism resulting in fatalities and injuries were, were reduced by 72% during these dates. Okay. Wow. Yeah. They also ran a uh, time series analysis to rule out different possibilities. Um, and actually this, this specific study, like they wanted to not even publish it, uh, not Rand corporation, but one specific journal because uh, they, they, they couldn't really understand it, but as more and more data kept coming in, uh, they 
the, the publishers who were overseeing the publication of it literally said, we have no choice but to publish this because the amount of data is so robust and every other like coincidental possibility, time series analysis, uh, analysis drifts in, in data and, and different like cyclical information was all factored into this. And they said, you know, this is a robust study and clearly something was going on. So what is actually going on? Um, there are different thoughts about what's going on. So I'm gonna present one thought. Um, how does this exactly happen? Um, how does, you know, this unified quantum field, this coherent resonance actually take place? Uh, how does it spread from one entire group or spread to an entire group from one localized position? So let's say X amount of people in a small group, how does that influence the whole collective? Okay. You can think of it as like a laser and they, they call it the field effect. It's straight coherent light. It's directed energy. And so according to the Institute of Science and Technology and Public Policy, um, the field effects principle is that it's not necessary to act individually on each individual constituent of a system, that the system can be handled in one stroke at the collective level. So those 7,000 people meditating created a harmonious field effect, which then spread throughout the collective. As you know, Lewis, everything's energy. Mm -hmm. So the Maharishi effect has been studied by many, many, many people, uh, s uh, many studies around the world. Um, and it's clear that prayer and meditation, even from a scientific perspective, totally works. And me for myself, and I know you're the same way, Lewis, and probably most people, if not everyone listening, we know that prayer works in person in our personal lives. So how could it not affect the collective? So uh, David Rodriguez, um, he was part of this event. He had made this tweet back in 2020. If only 1% of us meditated on raising the conscious vibration of the planet, we would affect the other 99% and permanently change the negative dense direction forever. Prayer and meditation works, especially when gathered together. So I read that and then uh, David and I connected uh, a few months later after that. And I brought this idea up to him and he was down right away, right away. So he got a bunch of people involved. The people that I mentioned earlier brought others involved or brought others to the table. Um, amazing stuff. But there is Lewis, this book called The Emergence of Global Consciousness Connected. And it's written by this PhD, um, Roger Nelson. And this book is one of the most dense uh, books for analysis and, and data that I wouldn't even recommend most people even, even get it because most people just won't read it. But they actually study this stuff on a very, very detailed scientific level. And their group is called the Global Consciousness Project. Um, and it's actually the home of it is the Institute of Noetic Sciences, which um, um, one of the Apollo astronauts, um, I, I'm not remembering his name at the moment, but Lewis, you know who I'm talking about. He was the guy who, um, he had basically spoken out and revealed some data on, you know, extraterrestrial phenomenon, things like that. Um, I, I just can't recall his name at the moment, but he was part of that. And one of the scientists here at this project says that the idea of a global consciousness is that it's real. It's been quietly collecting data for nearly two decades and reached a conclusion based on those data that's much stronger than the evidence that won the CERN team, the Nobel Prize for discovering the Higgs boson. Okay, so Dean Radin, the chief scientist at the Institute of Noetic Sciences said this about this global consciousness project in terms of their uh, random number generators and how they're doing this throughout the world. So they had these random number generators and there's at the time there's 141 sites around the world and they're running 24 hours a day. And so what those are, it's based on quantum tunneling to produce unpredictable sequences of zeros and ones. But when an event happens that synchronizes the feelings of millions of people, the network of these random number generators can actually become subtly structured. And so it gives off different data points. So this is crazy. 
with that, they say, we calculate one in a trillion odds that this effect is due to chance. The evidence suggests an emerging noosphere or the unifying field of consciousness described by sages in all cultures. So quantum tunneling basically is an electron that passes through a barrier when as defined by classical physics, it shouldn't have the energy to be able to do that. So it's sort of, I mean, it, it literally is a free energy and uh, quantum mechanical process that's happening. That's incredible. And yeah. we, also, we also know they've manipulated classic physics to keep us in our own paradigm also. Exactly, exactly. Um, and these guys are using true random number generators. Uh, and, and that's different from these pseudo random data generators uh, that are sometimes gathered by computer programs. So this is the real deal of these random number generators. And he, the, one of the scientists wrote that the future of the sequence of bits is not predictable because it does not exist until it happens. And the determination whether the next bit will be a one or zero is dependent on quantum level physics. So they've actually studied Lewis thousands of different events over the years, and they can see where there's spikes in, in the data. And major, major events show that, like 9-11, Princess Diana's passing, um, large meditations and prayers that they've done, uh, you know, many, many other events. So it's literally, in my view, uh, we're, we're either shifting timelines or, or changing how events occur because all that really does exist is the now moment. And the concept of time uh, really is a very fluid and not tangible thing. So based on what you're saying, do you think it's possible to do a mass meditation and actually on that day change the Schumann resonance also? Um, I don't know the answer. Uh, I would assume well, get to work. it's possible, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I was just wondering because I know that's they're studying the Schumann resonance a lot and they're seeing some very interesting um, changes that are relative to other things that are going on on the planet. So I, I'm curious on that one. Absolutely. Um, to end this little segment, um, I'd like to read another quote by the man who I quoted at the beginning. And I think it's really fitting for what this is. He says, someday after mastering the winds, waves, tides, and gravity, we shall harness the energies of love. And then for the second time in the history of the world, man will discover fire. Wow. Read that again. That's really cool. Someday after mastering the winds, waves, tides, and gravity, we shall harness the energies of love. And then for the second time in the history of the world, man will discover fire. That is very interesting. Yeah. yeah. That is very, very interesting. Yeah. Powerful, powerful. So this was the event that took place on November 1st, 2020 called protect the vote. And we had a lot of people involved and it was a really, really good time. And I really believe that what we're seeing right now uh, with the truth of the election coming out, that this certainly played a role. Um, you know, I'm not going to state that it was the only thing that's clearly not true, uh, but I do believe fully that this played a role and that we will see the truth come out. Yeah, that's incredible. So in knowing what you know about this, how do you think that could have affected the Mandela effect? Um, I think that, I mean, it's, it's possible that timelines changed even before, let's say the election. And I, I think that's a realistic possibility where we even got to this point to where something, where, where, this election could be set up in a way where it was to where uh, entrapments could happen. Um, Cause I think that as we know, the looking glass technology is very fascinating. And there's probably a lot that has happened in the past in relation to that, 
to even give it get us on this timeline to where mm-hmm. something like this could again even happen in 2020 so you know how does it relate specifically to the mandela effect um i think it's possible that it it could have helped and and could and maybe still is helping uh, the events unfold in different ways. But again, it's it's really in the now moment too, because the prayers and the positivity that we're sending out right now still has an effect. Okay, so how about this one? And this this is going to be one. So. We have to we have to pick a premise. So let's go say we go with the premise that the looking glass technology is real and the white hats captured it, right? They can travel back in time to fix things. What if they intentionally made these subtle changes? So when it comes time to reveal everything, they can show proof. See, we took F Y off of Jif, Jiffy. Now it's Jif. Out of the we are we are the champions, right? But we took of the world off of there. So what what and this is this makes sense to me. If you you have to make that jump though to the looking glass technology of time travel back into the past and and forward is is possible. So if it's if it's possible, then they maybe they are doing the White Hats are doing this to give us subtle clues that we can we can jump timelines without freaking everybody out or change the timeline. Because I believe if the looking glass technology is true, that they've probably had to go fix things. God knows how many times, hundreds and hundreds, maybe thousands. Because if things don't get in the right direction and there's one clue, and I know we're going to cut this short today, but there, there's, there's one clue that makes a lot of sense. So I, I talked with Juan Osaban and he specifically, specifically told me that there's some form of a quantum computer where they have run these scenarios millions of times to predict what's going to happen. And I didn't buy it at the time. I'm wondering if maybe that's a that's a friendly way of saying they've jumped into the future to see what changes were done and therefore they can go back and, and fix it, go back and fix, go back and fix it. And I've heard that if this is the fact that they're either gonna they're gonna seal or put that technology, they're gonna destroy it. But to me, I've never been more leaning towards there's some form of time jump or time travel than today after re- reviewing the Mandela effect. So that's what makes sense to me. Yeah, I agree with that, Lewis. Um, it's, it's so hard to know um, w- what's truly going on because, you know, in in again, in this now moment, in this right here now, um, and I say this from a very like scientific perspective, not in the you know spiritual sort of sense. I mean, it is one and the same, but all of life exists right here and right now. And so, what what is the end of time? What is the beginning of time? You know, and how can we how can we shift things? Um, all of it's possible. That's, that's the overall point. All of it is possible because life is happening. Yeah, I, I agree. So I, I, think, I think, you know, timeline jumping and taking back the looking glass and using quantum technologies, absolutely. Well, and real quick, isn't, you, you said you don't say this in the spiritual sense, but isn't quantum mechanics really where where the spiritual and science is the only point they really come together yeah yeah absolutely um yeah i was trying to just state you know one specific aspect of it but that's what i believe fully lewis definitely all right cool yeah 
Um, I know you got to run. Is there anything else you want to cover? No, the truth is coming and it can't be stopped. I know it's fun too. It's, it's coming. And, uh, and guys, tomorrow I have a show. Well, if, if you're watching a replay, then you may have missed the next show. Who knows? But anyways, on Thursday, the last day of March, I have a show with uh, uh, Jason Q and we are, are going to review all of March because there's a lot that happened and he's going to tie it into the past. So this is very, very relevant to our discussion today. Lance has been wonderful. Thank you, Lewis. Thank you great. so much, man. Yeah, this, this was awesome. This was, this was great. Um, guys, I'll stay on for just a couple minutes. If you want to, if you have anything to say, I'll respond in chat. Um, but Lance has work to do. Please go support Lance. You can go to my link at screwbiggov.com slash shop. I believe it's in the description. Click on a scent, nutrition or EMF harmonized. And either of those would support Lance and his company and you get fantastic products. And of course, I got my t-shirts. You can donate, whatever. Um, we love everybody. I'll stay on, on chat here for a minute uh, before I turn everything off. Thanks, Lance. Yeah, thanks, Lewis. Love you, man. Love everyone too. And let's keep moving forward. All right, buddy. You take All care. Right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.